Welcome to Tree Search Farms in Houston, Texas. I'm Heidi Sheasley, the owner. Uh, we started, or I started the nursery back in 1983 on another piece of property I was leasing. And then eventually we moved and bought land over here and moved about 87, 88. But Tree Search Farms, we are a niche wholesale grower. We specialize in growing unique trees and shrubs, perennials, hummingbird butterfly plants, citrus fruit trees, uh, ornamental grasses, I mean all kinds of unusual bulbs. So we're a specialty grower and main customers are retail nurseries, the specialty retail nurseries and um, landscapers. We do sell to churches and schools. Okay, a little bit about me, Heidi Sheasley. I have been in, from the day I could crawl, in the dirt, in the garden, animals, horses, always dogs. And um, I had a vegetable garden when I was, oh my gosh, started when I was eight years old out at our ranch and happiest with the vegetable garden and my horses back then. And then a small orchard back in those days. Didn't really know what I was doing, but I loved doing it. And then fast forward, I ended up starting this nursery. It was a hobby that became a business. Uh, one thing we also specialize in uh, are natives, native plants to Texas, Louisiana, Mexico, um, wonderful things like that. And of course, right now we're in our, one of our citrus orchards here in Houston. And this is something that Bill Rohde had got me into and introduced me to. So our two citrus orchards, we have over 60 varieties that grow here. Um, next to figs, citrus is one of the easiest fruits to grow. Uh, if you just control a few, few things, leaf miner. The leaf miner doesn't hurt the plant, which is ugly. We won't get in on that right now. This is one of the mandarins. We have many varieties of mandarins, of course, incredible grapefruit and one of the things we did not do because we didn't have time is thin our fruit one should never allow your fruit whether it's grapefruit oranges um, apples peaches you should never allow them to set that much fruit you should thin the fruit back when it's tiny 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 then you have better fruit and a stronger tree. Bill Rohde came into my life back in, oh, I think 86. And he's the one that introduced me to really growing citrus and fruit trees. He's the one that really created that part um, of our business. And we start growing, grafting citrus back, oh, the end, late 80s, before people really knew much about citrus. And then getting together with Dr. Bob Randall and Bob, oh my gosh, Bill Adams, Tom Leroy, so many amazing men and women who, um, Dr. Leon Atlas, who specialized in fruit trees and citrus. And they, I learned so much from all these people. We had, Bill Rohde had big events here to educate people with all these wonderful people speaking. But back to our, our uh, working with Urban Harvest and all the Master Gardener associations in six different counties starting back in 19, around 1990. Um, Bill Rohde, he's the one that really got these, really helped these organizations build their plant sales. and. We uh, did free, we off, offered the plants for the sales, but he did the slideshows back then, the presentations, and always had a descriptive handout for the talks. And education was critical to what we do. It's not just growing the plants, it's educating the client, educating the public. And um, on whether it's a variety or how it grows or the soils and um, he just did a phenomenal job of teaching me also. 
I'm the one that specializes in the perennials and the hummingbird butterfly plants, and I do all those presentations. But he's the one that really got me in research into the fruit and citrus. Um, and I can't thank him enough because it's just amazing. And people don't realize you can, Angela Chandler's the one that really sort of built this high density home orchard system, um, at least here in Houston. And that's where people think, oh my gosh, I don't have space to grow a lot of different fruits and citrus. You can, it's just pruning. You can put things closer together and it's just pruning, basically. I mean, even these two oranges are very close. And uh, for instance, uh, Ray Shear, their backyard, their fence line, instead of doing uh, ligustrum hedges as a screen, they have different oranges or grapefruit, all these evergreen citrus along the fence as a screen. They're evergreen, they produce amazing fruit. All citrus have wonderful, fragrant flowers. Bees, butterflies go nuts over the flowers. Um, nowadays, more and more people want production. Plants that are going to produce, give them food. Whether it's fruit trees, citrus, you can incorporate vegetables without having a vegetable garden into your flower beds. Beautiful kale, uh, Swiss chard, even broccoli, cauliflower. These are beautiful plants that can be incorporated into your flower beds, but it's edible. Um, oh my gosh, an urban harvest is the ultimate when it comes to education on all these different aspects. And um, it's just a phenomenal organization. And Bill Rohde and I, working with Bob Randall in the early days of building their sales, I'm very proud to say that um, Tree Search Farms is the one that really sort of helped build all these sales. But it's Bill Rohde and his marketing and his knowledge of all these fruits and citrus. These trees, citrus, one of the things, we have basically clay soil around here. And all our citrus are graft, grafted and are grafted on either trifoliate or flying dragon rootstock or cariso. And we have a dog here that wants to get in the picture because she keeps getting in the way. Um, so all of these, these were planted over 15 years ago. And... I don't know how many grapefruit we have right here. And all of them mostly are on the, the dwarfing flying, dra flying dragon rootstock. It's hard to get citrus on that now, but it's still available out there if you ask. But even if they weren't dwarfed, it's very easy to keep your citrus pruned. And you always do your major pruning on citrus in the spring after the danger of frost and freeze but ideally before it really starts pushing new growth. And you can literally just prune them to keep their size down so you can easily harvest your fruit. Okay, again, we're still in the back citrus orchard. Um, and these trees back here have been totally neglected. They're lucky to ever get watered. They never get fertilized. And they've been here over 15 years. So it's proof how amazing and easy citrus is to grow. If it has good drainage, they hate sitting in, in a wet spot. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind, most your oranges, mandarins, grapefruit, calamondins, kumquats are normally evergreen here in Houston. But your limes and lemons are tender, except for Meyer lemon, which is a fabulous, delicious lemon. It's the ultimate because it's more cold hardy it might drop its leaves. It's a big, juicy lemon because it's a cross between a lemon and an orange. So that makes it big. It almost looks like an orange. It's a little sweeter. And the Meyer lemon is what Luby's Cafeteria used to use for their lemonade a long time ago. But it's the ultimate lemon. Everyone wants it. And uh, normally easy to get. And the citrus in here, we have oranges in this area. This is a very unique, the small one here, Uju Kitsu orange. 
and uh, these are small, it's not quite ready, but it's a sweet, delicious, unique orange that looks like a pear, uh, sort of looks like a lemon pear, but that over in here, again, we haven't been harvesting as we should, this is Shamuti orange, because we haven't been, we've allowed them to set too much fruit, the oranges are not as big as they should be. Now, the neat thing about calamondins, you can grow these from seed, where you don't want to do that with other citrus. Um, you grow citrus from seed, you have no idea what you're going to get, and it could be up to 10 years before it even ever produces. But this calamondin grows from seed, it comes true, and it starts producing at a young age. Okay, here's part of our high density home orchard. So these are apple trees. We have we only have two here and we have four here, different varieties. But our whole grounds, we have over four acres of like a mini botanical garden. And we use it to educate our customers and our customers' customers on what uh, the special trees or shrubs or perennials that we grow, what they look like in the garden. Because people can look at a plant in a pot and it doesn't mean anything to them. But we walk over and, and show them a hundred foot Montezuma cypress that we had grown from seed. Now over here, this is the beginning of our fig orchard. And so this is O'Rourke fig which is one of my favorites. And um, figs are, in my opinion, the easiest fruit tree to grow. They almost live on neglect. They do need to be watered well. They have to have good drainage. They don't like sitting in a wet spot. You mulch them really well. You don't really need to fertilize, but just keep piling leaves and let leaves break down underneath the figs. Um, Figs, a lot of them will give you two crop, two sets of, or two crops, basically. And uh, I prefer the first crop. They're sweeter and, and more delicious. And figs ripen sort of between June and August. But this is a second crop that, of course, is too old. But we like to prune our figs in the wintertime just to keep the size down so it's easier to pick the fruit or harvest the fruit. I love the look in the wintertime because they're very prehistoric looking. But um, during their growing season, it's a very beautiful tropical look. A tree that looks very tropical, but very, very tough. So over here, We've, over time, we've lost a few, a couple of them set in areas that were too wet. But we have banana fig, which is one of my favorites. Um, Celeste is known as the Texas sugar fig. It's a small, sort of tan brown fig that's absolutely delicious, sweet, heavy producer, great for fresh eating and for cooking. And then uh, there's LSU purple and LSU gold. There's many varieties of figs. Okay, another part of Tree Search Farms is our cottage over here that we use for uh, events and helping green clients over when we want to sit down and go over the plant. And the chickens and the turkeys. So, just have to show off some of my flock. and then we have about 13 varieties of chickens. They give us wonderful eggs in every color you can imagine. And uh, just an awful lot of fun. When uh, it's one of the few times I actually sit, sit and relax. 
with the chickens. I have a lot of friends that come over here who just want to chill with the chickens. And, uh, you can tell right now we have a few roosters. Then there are the turkeys. So we have two commercial white, tur white turkeys and then we have two heirloom breeds of turkeys. They're just three months. These are um, Annabelle. They are a year old. And then the Narragansetts and the Royal Palms are three month old heirloom turkeys. So, um, something I just sort of fell into. Same with the chickens. I inherited chickens, and then next thing you know, I had 26 chickens. But they're a lot of fun. 